I'll just cock the shutter, put the freshly cleaned retard gear train in place, except one of the springs has just shifted in my cleaning process, I'll just pop that back where it came from. Oh, I might have to use my super duper. No, that's fine. I thought I was going to have to use my terrible pointy tweezers for that. I might end up stabbing myself again if I do that. Pull that arm back so that that arm's not trapped on top of the tab on the blade actuating ring. It should be pushed back by the tab on the blade actuating ring. That's so that when the blades are in the parked position, the retard gear train is effectively disconnected from it. It's, uh, the pallets aren't engaged. Alright, let's see what sort of speed we get. That could be a bit quick. It wasn't wasn't ridiculous. We'll start it there. I've got plenty of adjustment from that point. My self timer goes over here. Yes, that's seated correctly. Yeah, that's running down a bit uh, smoother than it did before we started. Now both of these speed trains I have had cleaned them in the ultrasonic cleaner in some naphtha and blown all that naphtha out and then I have lubricated them lightly with some graphite powder. I'll just lubricate that with some uh, molybdenum paste and just a wipe on that, very light wipe on the spindle of that pinion. Drop that into place. Get this spring hooked over the pin. Stretch this out, couple it correctly. Right, so the last tooth on the pinion here is in the first notch of the gear there. That's ready to go. The spring is there still, that's good. Right, the shutter speed settings cam plate. I'm just running some molybdenum paste around those areas there. Make sure it picks up the B lever, get this round into the eighth of a second position, cock the shutter, fire it, miles too quick. So the, that tells me that the retard gear train needs to be swung further in, inwards, for greater engagement with the cam. So I've got to slacken this screw off slightly, move the retard gear train in just a wee bit. Tighten that screw back up. Get everything back where it was. Get that round to the eighth position. And what have we got? That sounded more credible. It was too quick, but we're in the ballpark. Okay, that was probably closer to 15th, which is ridiculously quick here. Okay, so what's the one second like? Quick. Okay, so I'll lift that off again. Cock the shutter so I can move the 
retard gear train in again. Just move it in just a little bit more. Oh, that was probably too much. But we'll try it there. These adjustments are pretty subtle. You can spend a long time going backwards and forwards trying to get the balance right between too fast and too slow. Right, this would be an 8. I, I suspect actually that's very slightly fast, but we'll, I'll go and test that. What's the 15th sound like? It does sound fast. I'll just go and test this and report back. I think we're probably about even 20% fast there. Well, I tested those speeds and actually they're very good. The eighth of a second was certainly a slightly fast, but it was nowhere near 20% fast. It would be more like 5% fast. The uh, 60th of a second was roughly the same amount slow. So a good compromise position for everything there. Let's get this little lever in place. Getting the spring hooked behind its post is often the trick here. Now that's it. That's good. So I'll get this plate in place. I'll just put the retaining ring loosely on the front again to hold that in place while I get the outer case on the shutter but otherwise we're good we, did we check the self timer let's set this to an 8 set the self timer release the shutter Yep, that works nicely and that sounded good too, it sounded smooth as these things go. They're not a Swiss watch. Right, to get this in the case. This is all cleaned. I'm just going to give the curved pusher piece here a light white with molybdenum paste. And the same with the inner and edge the sides of that gear, that curved rack, and drop them into the case. I don't think the damage around the opening of this case is going to cause any problems, though I'll certainly be aware of it. And uh, be watching for that one. So I've just cocked the shutter to make it easier to get this in place. The curved pusher here has to go behind this tab. So that should be right. If I rotate that into place, get this to flash contact to drop into the groove there in that little plastic connector. That looks good. And I'll get its three screws in place. And the little screw that clamps the flash contact firmly, just run that in until it makes and not an awful lot more than that. And this requires the front, the front rings, which I've got here. So I'll clean these and we can put them in place. 
Okay, start putting this back together. Now this piece, I think someone's been at that. That tab looks a bit of an odd shape to me. But it'll probably function. Let's run some molybdenum paste on the bottom surface, the inside and the outside edge. Doesn't need any on the top. That just hooks into there like that. This tab here has to hook into the fork on the aperture setting lever at the bottom. These two notches have to hook to here and here at the same time. So get that tab in place, swing that round so it's correctly seated. Now you can see that as I move the shutter speed setting here, the aperture tab is following it. So that's good. You can take that retainer ring off now because I'll be putting something else on there shortly. Here's our piece with the numbers. There's something odd about this. There's some red showing on there. I don't know whether somebody's tried to fill those numbers with red. Um, or what's going on there. I'm going to have a go at cleaning that. I don't want to lift the white lettering out, the numbers out either, but somebody's... now it just looks like pink numbers, patchy pink numbers. I'll try cleaning that off. No, that's not going away and I'm not going to rub any harder because I'll end up taking the paint out and we'll have no numbers. Let's get this hooked into place. There's a little notch on the bottom here which couples with a tiny tab right down here. This piece, which is the lens mount, the front lens mount, these little notches are the detent for the shutter speed setting. I'm just going to wipe that with some molybdenum paste. You can do the same with graphite grease or anything else for that matter. You don't need much. This only fits on in one place. There's a little hole in the back of this that couples over a post. The uh, number plate is off over to the side there at uh, 9 o'clock position or thereabouts. We'll get the re retaining ring started and I'll run that down with the tip of a toothpick and check the action here. You can do this up until it gets tight. Yeah, if I went one stage further that would be noticeably tight. So we'll just go back to the last position I think. That seems good. Right, and that tiny screw, we'll put it into there. That little black screw, the easily lost little black screw. And unfortunately easily damaged too because it's quite small. It's awkward to get at. It's particularly awkward to get put it back. It, only, it, it probably doesn't even rotate a full turn, it's that short. So it's awkward to deal with. And at that point, our shutter's complete and just needs the lenses put back in it. And I'll start with this one. First thing I'm going to do here is clean the body of the lens so that when I start cleaning the glass I'm not smearing any oil or anything onto the glass because trying to get oily marks off glass is awkward and using some glass cleaner on a cotton bud I'll just clean that inside lens rotating the cotton bud as I go to keep presenting a fresh surface to the glass. I'm looking to see what 
how well I've done. I can see a little mark there which may or may not go away, so I'm going to clean that again. Some marks in the coating will never go away. Once you've got them, they're, they're there for good. So if you can't get all the marks off in the first three or four attempts with a cotton bud you're probably not getting those marks out and you can stop right there because all you end up doing is risking damaging the lens by excessive cleaning all right so that's that's the innermost the inside piece there now i'm going to do this front piece this is a little bit dirty looks like a fingerprint on there and the fingerprints can be problematic with lenses if particularly if they've been there a long time probably for the same reason that fingerprints tend to etch into metal surfaces it'll be the skin oils and uh, salts in your perspiration that potentially do the damage fingerprints that you put on a lens while you're servicing a camera is something entirely different because that's only going to be there for a very very short time and it, it won't have any lasting effects right well now I can see the outside of the lens is clean I can see better to the inside and there is still a little smear there on the inside so I can go back in and get that now now that I can more clearly see exactly what I've got there yeah I can just see that Yeah, that looks nice. Very pleased with that. I'll do the same to the rear group now. Right, I've just cleaned the body of the lens and now I'm cleaning the glass surface here. That looks good. Now there's a chip in the paint on the edge here. Now I'm going to cover that with a bit of uh, marker pen because otherwise that could scatter light. It's just in the paint. The chip's in the paint. It, it's not in the glass. But I'll just blacken that out so that there's no transmitted light through there. There's a bit on the other side there, one small chip there. That'll do. I'll put that rear group in place. And finger tight is enough. You don't need to use a tool to install a lens like that. And this surface, I'll give this another clean. This I've got fairly clean. I had a look at it earlier. But it's not perfect. I'm just seeing if I can improve my earlier performance. There's something on that glass that you can feel it. You can feel it on the cotton bud. Uh, it's probably... There was probably some grease or something like that's got on that glass. The cotton bud, uh, it doesn't slide smoothly over it. You can feel it grabbing. It means there was something on there.
You can use other things to clean glass. Acetone works. But the problem with using things like acetone is it will also affect the paint around the mount. And you can end up chasing your tail trying to get smears of freshly softened paint off the lens. I'm fairly confident this stuff's on the outside. So it should clean away. What happens when you've got a lens like this is grease or other contaminants get down around the edge of the glass and then they'll ooze out afterwards when it suits them. And you can get marks around the outside. I'm looking at this lens. I'm seeing marks inside the lens. I'm going to take this apart. There's a tiny grub screw here. If I back that out, I can unscrew the outside part here and that just releases the outermost element. The fact that that screw has got no paint on it suggests to me that somebody's had that off before. So it's possible that I'm looking at the results of somebody's imperfect cleaning job rather than uh, anything else. I'll just take that cover off. Not the whole lens, I just want the, the top part off. I'm going to have to fight with this to get this apart, I think. Yeah, it's unscrewing from the body before I can get the thing apart. I'm going to have to struggle with this. Well, I gave that a fair go, but uh, it wasn't going to happen. There's no way to get that lens apart. I tried two spanners on there, and if I tried any harder, applied any more force, the likelihood was I'd end up breaking something. So I gave up at that point. I've decided that a minor issue is not worth killing it for. Now I'll put this shutter back on the camera body and see what sort of result we get. But it's not cocked all the way, so the timing's not 100%. Let's just move that curved rack a tooth or so and see what we get. It did feel a little bit rough to me. There's something wrong there. That shutter is not seated correctly. Let's go back a tooth. We know it's had problems there because of that roughed up edge. The shutter's not cocked. So that curved rack in the shutter may be our problem. One more tooth, and see how that goes. That's certainly the right position, but it's not a very nice feel to it. Let's take that off. So the problem. I suspect is at this gear or it's at that rack. I'm just look, rolling this round looking at this gear see if there's any problem with the gear and honestly there doesn't, there's nothing obvious there at all. So that means that any problem is that in that curved rack here. We know the casing's damaged it's possible that that curved rack, that, that's got damage too. So I'm going to take this case off, replace that curved rack. Well, 
Much has happened since we last spoke. As you can see, it's got the knobs on, leatherettes are all finished. I think you'll agree that they look a lot tidier than they did when the camera arrived. But, it took a little bit longer than I expected to get to this point. When we last spoke, I was busy trying to fit the shutter assembly. Things didn't go as smoothly as I'd like. The film advance kept sticking. And I thought various things. I thought that the curved rack was probably subtly damaged. I couldn't really see an awful lot. It didn't look pretty, but it, you know, it wasn't as... I thought perhaps that was causing me problems. I tried swapping that, didn't fix it. At that stage the shutter, the whole film advanced and the camera started to stick. I couldn't figure that out. I had to take the whole base off the camera, take the film advance shaft out, give it an extra third of a turn of tension, put it all back together and it worked like a champ. But the problem with the shutter was here. Can you hear that noise? That's me running that curved rack inside the housing. That damaged housing I spoke of and I didn't think it would cause any problems. Well, it did cause problems. The distortion in here was such that it was rubbing on the teeth of the rack. And that created all the excess load and made the shutter cocking action unusually stiff. So I've had to replace this whole piece. And it's fortunate I was able to find one in my parts that would do the job. Because there are... They changed the design of this part. The earlier cameras were subtly different from this and as you might have guessed I've got more parts for the earlier cameras. But I was able to overcome that so there you go it was the housing that was the problem not the rack. But the camera well there it is. I know the meters useless it sort of reacts to light sort of when it feels like it and if you tap it because it's got a broken pivot pin that's never ever going to come right is it worth chasing that fault well that would be heroic level servicing really to remove the movement from the take the uh, movement the coil and everything off that uh, meter unsolder the connections top and bottom somehow glue back a new pin to the inside of the coil, reassemble it, solder your connections back again without damaging anything. Yeah, that could be done in theory. I'm sure that if I practiced it I could have a success rate of probably 40 or 50 percent. But um, how would I get all the practice in? So, this camera, that can go back to its owner. Just as it is now, a nice usable camera. But I will have discussion with him, see if he wants to go crazy and spend money on a new meter. I'm not sure I could guarantee him a meter that would be accurate, but he would have one where at least when he pointed it at the light, the meter needle swung reliably and swung back reliably when the light level dropped. Unlike this one. It sort of works okay if you hold it upside down, but who can hold a meter, the camera upside down to check light levels? Thanks for watching.